everyone. My name is Ian Longton, and I'm coming to you from the Imaging Lab at the Imatest headquarters in Boulder, Colorado. Today we're going to be going over how to set up the modular test stand, uh, as well as the reflective module, in, or in order to do some basic uh, testing with our ESFR ISO chart. So before we get into that, I want to go over the system real quick. The base module of the modular test stand consists of the camera post, the camera rail on the floor, and the chart holder in the back. Now what these three components allow for is really reliable and robust uh, uh, alignment between the camera and the charts that you're using for your testing. The camera rail allows for easy positioning back and forth as well as recording that position and the test distance. We also have our gimbal head mounted on the camera post, that's for easy fine-tuning of the camera position. And the chart holder is a real stable, reliable system for holding test charts of various sizes, from our smallest color checker charts all the way up to our uh, 4x uh, giant checkerboard charts. So uh, that's the base module, and then mounted on here is also the reflective module for the modular test stand system. What this consists of are these two rail arms attached to the chart holder, and these allow for positioning the lights back and forth really easily, as well as adjusting the angle relative to the chart itself. The, we have mounted on it today our KinoFlow LED lighting system. This is a high quality LED lighting system that offers a full range of dimmability as well as color temperature adjustment. Um, and so those in conjunction with the reflective module allow for real easy positioning of the lights. So today we're going to be getting set up with a GoPro camera. This is a real basic kind of wide angle camera system. It's good for demonstration and we're going to be getting that set up with our uh, ESFR ISO chart. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with our uh, getting our GoPro mounted onto the camera post. Like I said, it's just a standard GoPro, pretty standard wide angle system uh, with a tripod, uh, tripod foot on the bottom for a standard tripod head. So we'll get that installed in our gimbal head. Slide it in there, tighten it down. Now a quick overview of the gimbal head itself. You can see there's a few degrees of freedom, so it can swivel about that axis as well as about the x-axis there. So easy adjustment there. Uh, this stage at the bottom allows for translational adjustment along the x-axis, and then adjustment in the y-axis is controlled coarsely by the camera podium. The whole thing slides up and down, and then there's some fine-tuning you can do within the gimbal head itself. For the time being, I'm going to leave all these knobs loose because we're going to have to do some final adjustments, some fine tuning to make sure our camera is aligned with the test chart. But well, now that it's in here, I'll go ahead and start recording so we get a feed and then uh, get the, our test chart set up. So the test chart we're going to be using today is our ESFR ISO chart. This chart is a variation on the ISO 12233 standard chart. We've included some color patches as well as some extra hyperbolic wedges. And there's a nice OECF ring for noise and tonal measurements. Uh, it can also give you a rough distortion measurement and uh, obviously the slanted edges for sharpness measurement. So this is a real good multi-purpose uh, test chart for just kind of a general lab setup. This is our largest size and the 4X size. It's good for wide angle systems because this chart is designed to fill as much of the field of view as possible. So. To get it set up in our chart, our uh, chart holder here, we're going to start by getting the bottom installed in the chart rail. And if you can see, the chart rails, the top, top and the bottom, they include these center lines here. These lines indicate the center position of the test chart stand itself, and they're really useful for aligning with the center of the chart to make sure that everything is nice and centered and aligned uh, and make sure your tests are reliable. So we'll start at the bottom here. Make sure, make sure this line lines up with the triangle. Looks pretty good. Now that we're satisfied with that, we'll go ahead and bring the top rail down. And these chart rails are angled at the top and the bottom. And these help to make sure that the chart is sitting flush back against the chart, uh, chart holder itself. Make sure the plane is nice and flat and uh, vertical. So, got our chart set up. That's not going anywhere. Pretty happy with that. 
And so now we can make sure our camera system is aligned to the chart itself. So an easy way to check this is by bringing the camera to the center position and getting it lined up with the middle of the chart. And then from there, because it's on a fixed axis, any adjustment to your working distance, you can uh, uh, be, be uh, nice and confident that your alignment is not getting messed up even as you adjust the working distance. So to adjust it, uh, we're going to loosen up the foot brake at the bottom and then just simply slide the whole camera post forward. Slide it forward here until we're near the uh, chart itself. Now you can see just by eyeballing it and then also uh, from the feet of the camera itself that we're pretty far from the center. So we need to come up a bit. So we're going to loosen the camera podium, raise it up until we're about in the middle. So you can see from, oops, down a little bit more. You can see from the feed of the camera, as well as looking at it, that looks pretty good in the center. We can do some fine tuning adjustment on the, on the gimbal head, like I mentioned. So for now, I'm pretty satisfied that with that looks good. So we're gonna head and go ahead and lock that down. And now our height is adjusted and we can uh, uh, move the camera post back to its final working distance. Now, again, I mentioned this chart is designed to fill as much of the field of view as possible. It can be pretty difficult to fill the entire field of view uh, of a wide angle system with a flat rectangular test chart, but we're gonna do the best we can, make sure that we can see uh, as much of the test chart as possible. So we'll go ahead and adjust this position back, 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 back until we're satisfied. We can see the sidebar is just fine. We can almost see the top and bottom, but it looks like our camera might be tilted down a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is adjust on the gimbal head, adjust that tilt up a little bit more, bring it back a little bit, get those top and bottom bars about as even as possible. Yeah, so they're just barely in the field of view, it looks like, maybe a little bit out, but that's okay. That looks pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead and lock down that adjustment, and then same thing side to side. Get the chart more or less centered in there. And that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and lock that down as well. So now our camera is aligned, pretty satisfied with that alignment. And if we wanted to, we could adjust the working distance, bring it a little bit closer. If we wanted to really fill the field of view and sacrifice some chart features, or we could bring it back, make sure we're getting all the chart features uh, and uh, just sacrifice some measurements in the outer regions of the image. But for now, we're we'll gonna call that good. Go ahead and lock it down with the foot brake. And then the camera's not going anywhere unless we want it to. It's also worth pointing out that the tape measure in the rail system itself, uh, this allows you to easily note and record the test distance that you're working at. And so in the future, if you want to reproduce this test or any other, as long as that's recorded somewhere, you know exactly where the camera was. Really easy to get it set back up and re reproduce the test you did last year, six months ago, or just yesterday. So note that, camera's locked down, chart's locked in, so now we're ready to move on to the lights themselves. So before I go ahead and adjust the lights out, I wanna point out one more feature of the Logic Test Stand. There's this plate down at the base that has angle markings on there. Uh, what this does is allows you to easily tell when you're, uh, uh, tell the relative angle of your lights relative to your uh, test chart. So I'm gonna be shooting for the 45 degree angle mark, lining up the bolts in the, in the arms of the re reflective module with the 45 degree mark on the plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this arm out until we're about 45 degree angle mark. That looks about good. Doesn't have to be real precise. Uh, 45 degrees is a good starting point to try to get that balance between uniformity of, of illumination, uh, but also avoiding any specular reflections uh, from the chart itself. So 45 degrees is a good place to start. We'll leave that light there. Move on to the second one. Slide this out, mindful of the cables. Same thing, until we're at the 45 degree mark, that looks pretty good. So now that both of the lights are at the 45 degree mark, it's a good time to turn the lights on, and we can check our, start checking our uniformity. So 
So we'll turn on both the lights. And it looks pretty good, but we can notice that right away, uh, the top right looks a little more dim, and I think it's because this light is pretty easy to tell is a bit lower than the other one. So to kind of make sure that the center of our light is lined up with the center of the chart for the, for the uh, best uniformity, what we're gonna do is just like on the camera rail, unlock the foot brake and slide the whole light forward towards the chart. And now we can easily see that indeed our light is pretty low. It's lower than the chart itself, so we're not getting the best uh, illumination in this top right corner here. So just like the camera post, I'm gonna unlock and slide it up until satisfied with the center line, about with the center line of the chart. Yeah, that looks about good. So we'll go ahead and lock that in and then slide the light back. You'll notice also as the light is closer, the light levels in the chart itself are higher. So if your lights are already at their max setting and you still need more light on the chart, these rails are a really easy way to get your lights closer to the test chart itself and get a higher light level. It's also good for smaller charts if you need a higher light level or if you're trying to avoid shadows from, uh, from your camera module itself and the camera post, um, or if you're trying to adjust the uniformity, sometimes bringing the light closer with different angles can help. But for us, 45 degrees with the lights all the way back looks pretty good. And so at this point, now this is where we would want to take our light meter and check the light levels across the chart. We're shooting for at least an 80% uniformity across the whole chart. Uh, and that will help ensure that our slant edge uh, sharpness measurements are as reliable as possible. So now we're all set up. We got our camera system aligned with the test chart and our lights are in, are in the appropriate position. We're happy with everything. The rolling casters can be locked down so that nothing is moving until we're ready for it to move. Um, and so now we're set up and ready to begin testing. So I hope this demonstration was helpful. Uh, to kind of help understand uh, how, how easy it is to get set up with testing using the modular test stand system along with the reflective module. So if you have any other questions about this system or any of our other solutions, please feel free to email sales at imatest.com. Thanks.